This cursed looking contraption is an OLPC X01, the original one laptop per child from 2007. It's a ruggedized low power x86 PC designed for children. And today we're gonna ruin it by installing Arch Linux. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy doing weird things with weird computers, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. One Laptop Per Child was a nonprofit that launched in 2005 with the rather altruistic goal of designing and distributing a low cost, ruggedized children's computer. Technically, they still exist, though they're no longer focused on building weird hardware. There are plenty of videos out there that cover the history and criticisms of this program, but this is Action Retro. Now, if you paid any attention to the expertly crafted title of this video, you'll know that I am not really interested in the history of this thing so much as I'm interested in trying to force Arch Linux onto it. On one hand, that's actually not much of a stretch. Under the hood, this thing is already running Linux, a respin of Fedora with a custom user interface called Sugar. On the other hand, the weird CPU and extremely limited memory, well, that's gonna be quite a hurdle. You see, it's 32-bit x86, but it's not i686. So even the majority of 32-bit x86 Linux distros won't even work on this thing. But Arch Linux 32 has an i486 build that will work. And I found a several years old forum thread about installing it on this very computer. And as we all know, the best place to get information about installing your operating system is a random ancient forum thread. Now this thing does have some interesting features that I'm curious if they will work under Arch Linux. For example, this button rotates the screen for when you have it in tablet or ebook mode. It has some game buttons and a D-pad that I don't know how they're connected. Maybe they're just a USB device. A super weird LCD that's backlit color, but can also be non-backlit reflective grayscale that's readable in direct sunlight if you turn the brightness all the way down. There is a hidden SD card slot underneath here which is where we actually have to boot the Linux distro from. So in order to start this cursed Arch Linux install, we're going to need another computer running Arch Linux and a quick word about today's sponsor, NordPass. Hello? Oh, I didn't order a Ferrari Testarossa filled with high-end cheese. With the state of the internet today, it's almost guaranteed that one of your passwords has been leaked. So using a strong, secure, and unique password for every service that you use is incredibly important. And NordPass makes that simple. Created by the same group of northern computer boffins behind the incredibly popular NordVPN, NordPass generates strong, unique passwords automatically. And you don't have to remember them. It's even easier than using your own homegrown passwords. Logging into a website just takes one click on your browser or your mobile device. Basically, it just works without you even having to think about it. NordPass uses advanced encryption and zero-knowledge architecture to secure your data, meaning only you have access using your master password or biometrics. And NordPass is more than just managing your passwords. Use it for your organization to enforce company-wide settings and password policies, synchronize credentials across devices, securely share those credentials, and even time limit access. And there's a built-in authenticator for two-factor authentication. Using a password manager is absolutely integral to my online workflow, and it should be for you too. So go to nordpass.com slash actionretro and use code actionretro for a free 14-day trial of NordPass business or 20% off. For the trial, no credit card is required. All right, here are my beloved Arch Linux GNOME install. We're just going to follow the instructions here on this forum post. 64 gig SD card should be much better than the super slow one gig of soldered on storage. Okay, after a bit of digging around, our first deviation from these instructions, there was no OLPC kernel in the i486 mirror Instead, it's under Pentium 4, so we'll have to change the architecture to Pentium 4 in pacman.conf. And now, sudo packstrap. Oh yeah, it's working. 
All right, on this SD card, we have our Arch Linux 32 install, technically Pentium 4, not i486. Now I'm gonna power this on and hold the X key, which puts us into open firmware. Yeah, that's right, this thing does not have a BIOS, it has open firmware as if it was an old Macintosh. And we can tell it to boot from the fourth script on the SD card, olpc.fth. Yeah, there it goes. Oh, look, it's booting. Look at that. And Kernel Panic. Who is this Kernel Panic? And what have you done with my Arch Linux? Okay, so I've spent a bunch of time faffing about in a ch root environment on the image on the SD card and playing around with the Arch Wiki, I have not been able to figure out why it kernel panics. If I had to guess, I'd say it has something to do with probably nobody is maintaining this anymore. Nobody is actually trying to run Arch Linux on their stupid goofy Shrek PC other than me, but all hope is not lost because the people in that thread had shared some of their pre-built SD card images. Unfortunately, all of them were broken links, so I took each one into the Wayback Machine and I found one that was archived and I downloaded it. And here it is on this SD card, a two gigabyte image of a known working install of i486 arch32 for the olpc x01 all right powering on hitting the x key for open firmware all right we will do boot sd olpc.fth oh boy this keyboard is terrible to type on oh it's booting Let's see if this thing wants to kernel panic. No, welcome to Arch Linux 32. This thing is booting Arch Linux. Oh uh, yeah, look, it found the Wi-Fi. All right, these little goofball antennas aren't for nothing. All right, so default login. Well, we're just gonna log in as root. Password on this image is XX. There we are, look at that. Oh, Neo fetch screenshot on the good old O-L-P-C. All right, so what can we actually do with this nonsensical thing other than fumble over the keys on the keyboard? Well, we have IW so we can connect to the internet. Uh, so we should have WLAN zero info. That is too much information. We also have the Wi-Fi menu command here. Let's see if that is a little easier. Nope. Okay, apparently WLAN0 was renamed to WLP0S15F5U1. So let's connect with that. Oh, did I mention that this keyboard is terrible to type on? Okay, trying a quick reboot because I also found that if you place the fourth script in a slash boot folder on the SD cards FAT16 partition, it should automatically boot into Arch Linux. All right, will it boot automatically? It does, it's booting into Arch Linux automatically. Uh, kind of a disappointing discovery. The brightness keys don't do anything, so I can't turn the brightness all the way down and get Arch Linux in a reflective sunlight readable display. Uh, volume keys do weird things. Yeah, basically none of the top row of keys do anything that they're supposed to. Well, even though Wi-Fi menu sees a bunch of Wi-Fi networks, it will not let me join any. Just giving me the generic connecting failed. I also tried a USB ethernet thing I have, that didn't work. I tried a couple other USB Wi-Fi dongles, those didn't work. This thing wouldn't even connect to my iPhone's hotspot. So this poor thing is just stuck offline despite these goofball antennas.
Well, I'm gonna call that a resounding success. It boots, it neo-fetches. I mean, it doesn't do anything else, but hey, Arch Linux on a goofy Shrek PC. Now, I did try CH rooting into this thing from my Arch Linux laptop and updating it that way. Unfortunately, when I did that, that dastardly kernel panic showed his face again. But that's okay, I don't think Arch Linux is the right distro for this super limited weird machine. In fact, I think there's tiny core Linux in this thing's future. I was reading a thread about it and apparently someone even got all the function buttons working. And I even found a thread where someone upgraded the non-upgradable memory by salvaging memory chips off of a RAM SIM and piggybacking them onto the soldered on RAM in this thing. So I might try that too. In any event, that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more weird shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful, and I just could not do this without you.